Hello, my name is Alan Foon, and this is the second part of my video on Playfair Way Evaluation. In this video, I'll be looking at play statistics. So, what are play statistics? It's how much volume has been discovered, uh, how many wells have been drilled, what's the chance of success. Uh, basically, you're trying to work out does the play have running room? What's been done before to give you context for your exploration efforts? Now, that doesn't mean that unexpected surprises won't happen. It's just that uh, you'll need to explain them. So, what's the average field size? What's the apparent minimum commercial volume? And how has the play evolved over time? And how have the different plays in the basin interacted with each other? This is important to understand, and one of the main tools we do to, to do that is a creaming curve. Now, a creaming curve, I'll zoom into this in a minute uh, to show you what, what that does. It's a plot of discovered volumes against number of exploration well drilled. There are also versions that plot uh, volume against time, so volume discovered by year. The volumes that are used are mid-case recoverable, uh, recoverable volume estimates in barrels of oil equivalent. You can do them for gas or oil, you can split it out, but normally people tend to use BOE barrels of oil equivalent. And the entire volume of the field is attributed to the discovery well. So if a field was drilled on the sake of argument in 1975, and you had a well that came in 1989 that significantly doubled the size of the field through reserves growth, the volume is still attributed to 1975. And the data for this can be obtained from the third party, so databases such as either Wood Mackenzie or IHS Market, uh, Eden, and uh, you need to put all this together. Now, obviously, these people do work very hard at making the databases reliable, but mistakes do creep in. So, a little bit about how a basin tends to evolve. So, this is cumulative volume, so the volumes add up as each well is drilled, and this is the well order, so number of wells increases. So initially, you've got sparse data, few wells are being drilled. Uh, initially, you may have quite a few failures, although alternatively, you may have a discovery with the very first well. And then you have a discovery, and then you have several big discoveries as the basin uh, starts growing. So this is when the basin is emerging. So frontier before the basin is drilled, or before a discovery is made, and emerging when the significant discoveries are made. Eventually, the discovery sizes tail off, and you would have a slow growth as smaller volumes are being added. Generally, there tends to be fields that are linked to existing fields to try to uh, develop them as satellites. There could be jumps as either new areas are found or new plays are added. And eventually, it all tails off. You're starting not to have any more discoveries, low volume adds, and diminishing returns. Although some operators may chase a Hail Mary, you know, as an American football, a big pass towards the end of the, uh, uh, of the, of the uh, fourth quarter to try to get to the uh, wide receiver to try to get a touchdown. So some people will try new things, and some of those may come off. Many of them don't. So this is what a creaming curve looks like. Now, there's another novel type of creaming curve called a normalized creaming curve. Now, this is developed by a man called Andrew Lodge. He used to work with Premier Oil. And what this does is you have a well count by percentage and a volume by percentage. So, a basin which has um, effectively one play, something like the East Irish Sea in, uh, in the UK, has big discoveries right initially and then very rapid creaming. So, later wells just don't find anything. 90% of the volume is found in the first 10-20% of the wells. So, it's like a gamma basin, you know, like the Greek letter gamma or the Russian letter gap. Alternatively, you can have a basin which is a 45 degree line, something like the Central North Sea in the UK, for example. So, about 30-40% of the volume is found in the first few wells, but then you have continual growth as either new plays are added or smaller fields within a complicated initially discovered play is added. So the basin keeps growing. So if you're an explorer looking towards the latter part of its life, you really kind of want to be in the red zone in this one. With this one, if you're lucky enough to get in the right at the beginning, great. But you really don't want to be here. So the normalized creaming curve, looking at percentages of a total, novel tool, very useful for basin screening. Some further examples. So this is a data from a fictional basin, completely made this up. Uh, so this is a history plot from year 2000 to year 2020. So the green are commercial wells, the yellow are sub-commercial discoveries, 
and the reds are dry holes. So initially we had three wells that were really successful, hot play, people get into it, people try new things, and then later, you know, kind of becomes less productive. Then oil price crashes in 2014, less drilling, and maybe new plays getting developed here. Then you have a plot by operating company. Now, different operators have different ideas. If you have a basin with a lot of different operators, let's say 10, 12 active operators, you will have 10, 12 different teams of geologists who will come up with 10, 12 different ideas, and new things will come through. If you have a monopoly, then you will have one team of geologists that will have one set of ideas. So new plays may be a little bit harder to push through because, again, within a closed organization, things tend to happen a little bit less. If you've got many organizations, however open or closed they are, new things will come through. So this is a plot showing different types of uh, operators. So in this particular fictional basin, we had Alpha, Bravo, Gamma, Delta, and Sigma, and Omega is the main operators, and this is where they come off. So Alpha initially started, it was very successful, then Bravo came in, then others came in. And you can also do plots within this by volume discovered by company, uh, how individual companies have individual success rates, how many wells individual companies drill and when, and you can see what the operator diversity of the basin has been through time. Generally, what tends to happen is that you have relatively low diversity in the beginning. There's a few people that went to enter the basin at the beginning. Then when it becomes a hot plate to be, everyone wants to get in there. A lot of farm in activity, farm out activity. And then towards the latter part of the basin, you'll end up with, again, a relatively small number of companies who really know the basin, really understand it, for whom this is a vital area. And the people who are you know, less successful move on to other things. Another type of plot is a success rate plot. So this is a plot looking at success rates. So you have success rate on here from 0 to 100. So if you have three wells that have all been commercial discoveries, the success rate for the year has been 100. And then what tends to happen is initially you'll have a, a big bump as people drill a few successful wells, and then it declines. Eventually it'll plateau out at a relatively stable rate. It may go up a little bit later as people may develop new plays, or it may go down as people try for Hail Marys. But this gives you an idea of where things are. And it also benchmarks your prospect success rate. You know, if you've got a 50% success rate for a prospect where the normal success rate for the basin is 30%, you've got to ask yourself some questions. Now, you could well be right, because there are specific uh, factors within your prospect that make things different. But with this, you ask yourself questions, which is the most important thing. This is a discovery history plot. Now, it's a little bit like a creaming curve, only you've got a year rather than well order, because some years you will drill more wells than others, as seen earlier on the uh, on the well history plot. So a lot of the volume was discovered in the first year, but you've had continual volume coming through. And what you can see here, again from the fictional basin, is green, is commercial volume, and yellow are sub-commercial volumes. So if you drill, for example, in 2002, drill quite a few wells, but there were smaller fields than expected, and therefore they were sub-commercial. Nobody obviously goes out to drill a sub-commercial well. They want to make things work, but it doesn't always come up like that. And then this is the creaming curve of the basin, so that's the well count. So you can uh, have about 170 wells drilled in this basin, which is quite a lot. Uh, and you can see you've still got a little bit of growth here, particularly this late uptick with potentially a new play being discovered. And then this is a normalized creaming curve. So this is a red type basin, i.e. high initial growth, but continual growth all the way through. It's not a gamma. Therefore, this is still a good basin to be, something that's important. Then you have field size distribution. So this is, um, again, from the fictional basin. So this is a histogram and log normal size, so logarithmic bins. So You've got quite a lot of very small fields, and then a few large fields, and then, you know, a size range that's there. Now, this looks fairly idealized. Real basins tend to have quite a lot more heterogeneity. So, to sum up, play statistics give you context, maybe you compare it with other plays, either within the same basin or within other basins. Also extremely useful for screening basins, so when you're looking at whether to invest in Basin A or Basin B or Basin C. But, as any financial analyst will tell you, past performance does not guarantee the future. Positive surprises can and do happen. 
So you need to be very careful about overconfidence based on statistics. Just because the statistics say so, ain't necessarily so. Well, it is most of the time, but surprises happen. And don't let the statistics stop the surprise. If your prospect has all the things going for it, everything is explained, doesn't fit the statistics, it's probably still a good prospect. So, happy exploring.